handful of information, you guys. The monomers of proteins is now the amino acid. And there are 20 different kinds of amino acids. What do proteins do? Well, you can sit there and memorize a laundry list of things that they do. Or you can remember this phrase, proteins do everything. Good. They do everything for you. They drive your car. They send your emails. Think about it. Muscle contraction, proteins. What? Making energy, proteins, enzymes, proteins. Everything about you is proteins. So you can sit there and remember all these things, or you can say, does my body do it? Yeah, it's proteins. Most likely it's a protein doing it. So let me give you an example. A lot, or 99.999% of your enzymes are made up of proteins, and enzymes carry out chemical reactions. Proteins help you store things. Proteins defensive, that's antibodies. If you're feeling good today because your antibodies killed pathogens for you, that's, those are proteins. They help transport things into the cell and out of the cell because they can serve as channel proteins embedded in your cell membrane. We'll talk about them in another chapter. They're hormones, like insulin for example. They are receptors that receive the message from insulin because there's a, for every insulin, there's an insulin receptor and they're both protein. They contract your muscles because your muscle tissue is full of protein. And they give you structure. Collagen, for example, gives you support and so forth. Look at that. Proteins do? Everything. There you go. That's the take home message. So one amino acid comes together to, with another amino acid. What type of reaction is this? Loss of water? Dehydration. Dehydration. What is the, the, the type of bond? Covalent. Now watch. The name of the bond is peptide. <coughs> the name of the bond is peptide. So peptide, we're talking about proteins. So watch. One peptide bond, another peptide bond, a third peptide bond, a fourth peptide bond. Eventually, I'm gonna say polypeptide, polypeptide many peptide bonds. So another name for protein is a polypeptide. Why? Because a protein is made up of amino acids that are attached together by peptide bonds. Okay. If we look at the amino acid, all 20 amino acids have this in common. Oh, you gotta listen to this. Because I challenge my micro students, they come and they come on the first day of class. Hi, Dr. Saad, how are you? How you doing? Good. <coughs> Draw one of these for me, please. What? I just said hi to you. Draw one of these for me, please. You just came from Gen Bio. <coughs> Give me this, please. So if you're coming to my micro, God help you. I'm asking for this. On the first day of class. That's, that'll wake you up, right? You need to know this. This is the common structure of amino acids. All 20 of them have the structure. It is not that bad. Look at it. It has a central carbon. And we know the carbon has to have how many groups? Four. four. Well, here they are. One, two, three, four. And it's an amino acid. So one of them is going to be an amine, and the other one is going to be the carboxyl group. This is hydrogen. And that is what's called an R group, which I say wild card. See, the 20 amino acids share this. All 20 of them have this. It's, they're different here in their R group. Let me show you. And you saw that picture before, actually. Well, here it is again. All 20 of them have this. The central carbon, the amine, the carboxyl, the hydrogen. It's, they're different here. What did we call these again? The R groups. There are 20 of them. Some of the R groups are hydrophobic. Some of the R groups are hydrophilic. You see that? Listen carefully now. If the R group is hydrophobic, then it's hydrophobic, I'm done. If the R group is hydrophilic, I have two options. Polar or electrically charged, okay? If I am polar, I'm done. 
If I am electrically charged, I have two options, negative or positive, or acidic and basic. Oh. That's what you need to know. I will not test you on drawing the structure, but you still need to recognize on an exam that this is an amino acid. Amino acid. And you need to recognize where the R group is, right here. Why? Because this is in common to all 20 amino acids. And remember the exercise? All of them can make enantiomers because they all have four different groups except for the glycine. Hopefully you remember that. So, like any other monomers, I take two monomers, dehydration, I bond them together. It is a covalent bond, but now it's called a peptide bond. How do I break it? What's the name of that reaction? Hydrolysis. Of course I need an enzyme for that. Okay? Let's say you were not listening to me right now. Do yourself a favor. Listen. This one is tough. Okay, now, I have amino acids. I'm bonding them. Look at that. Dehydration synthesis. Dehydration synthesis. Look at that. Now I have a polypeptide. Now, I'm going to read the sequence based on the color of the marker. Watch this. Green, blue, blue, black, black. Did you catch that? That's the sequence going this way. That is called the primary structure of the protein. The sequence. Now, obviously, I'm just doing it based on color of the marker. But the amino acids have names. So when you put them together like this, that's the sequence right here. And this is the beginning of the protein designated by what's called the end terminus. And this is the end of the protein designated by what's called the C terminus. Listen to me reading the primary structure, which is the sequence. sequence. Now, in this one, I said green, blue, blue, black, black, because that's what I based it on. These guys, they have names, and they have abbreviations, three-letter abbreviation and one-letter abbreviation. You do not need to know that, thank God. Mm -hmm. I know it because of how many years I worked with it, a lot of years. So now I can stand here, because I remember, and go like this. Glycine, proline, threonine, glycine, threonine, glycine, glutamic acid, serine, lysine, cysteine, proline, leucine, methionine, <sighs> and keep going. Because I know them. Just me doing that, what am I doing? I'm giving you the primary structure of the protein, which is the? There it is. Are we okay so far? We got three more structures to go. Obviously, the second one is called the secondary structure. Listen to me, please. The sequence right here will determine how this part starts folding. The sequence right here will determine how this part starts folding. I call that secondary structure. I actually call it better folding in the neighborhood. See. When I learned biology, my professor said, secondary structure, deal with it. But then when I went home, I go, what? I don't get it. I don't, what is that? It's not descriptive. I don't need it. And then I, wait a minute. That's folding in the neighborhood. That's folding right here in this neighborhood. And then there's another one right here. And then another one right here. So I remember as a student, that's folding in the neighborhood. That's secondary structure. To me, that's more descriptive. And there are two kinds. The sequence in this area here can cause this area of the protein, the neighborhood, to fold into an alpha helix. The other sequence can form this structure called the beta pleated sheet. It looks like a folded piece of paper. So now listen, you gotta catch what I'm saying. The sequence will determine <coughs> which of these will fold, it will fold into. For example, Black, black will make this one. Green, blue will make this one. It's the sequence that will do that. Watch. If I do green, black, 
It could be something completely different there, right? But there are only two kinds of secondary structures. Alpha helix or beta pleated sheet. That's it. There are only two kinds. Thank God. Now, there has to be something holding that together. See, pretend as if I took a piece of paper and I cut it into a helical structure. Unless I'm holding it, it will fall apart. Do you agree? Well, it's the same thing. Something has to hold this, otherwise it will fall apart. And it's, look, oh, look dotted line. What's a dotted line? Hydrogen. hydrogen. No, no. Hydrogen bond. bonds. Yeah. It's hydrogen bonds. It's hydrogen bonds that's holding your protein structure together. Your alpha helices and your beta pleated sheet. Oh, wait a minute. No wonder why fever will kill me. If you have, hang in a sec. If you have uncontrolled fever, it can be fatal for you. Why? Because what breaks a hydrogen bond? A little bit of? Heat. There you go. And isn't that fever? So, a little bit of heat will break this one. Break this one. Break it. Uh, 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 uh. Look what's happening to your protein. It's unfolding. It's falling apart. And we call that denaturing. When your proteins denature, there's no getting them back. And enzyme denatures. It doesn't work anymore. So when we have fever, uncontrolled fever, knowing that proteins do everything and they're held by hydrogen bonds and heat can break hydrogen bonds. No wonder why fever can be fatal. All right, let's go on to the third tertiary structure. Let me get your question real quick. Um, so I was just making sure that the secondary structure determines the components of the alpha helix. It's the sequence of the primary structure. That's a good question. The primary structure, which is the protein sequence, will determine how many of these you will have, how many of these you will have, you see? Some proteins only have these, some proteins only have these, some will have a mixture. Who determines that? The primary structure, which is the sequence of the protein. It's gonna all turn out to be this. The sequence of the protein will determine how many of these you'll have, what kind of these you'll have, what kind of these you will have, and then the function. See? Structure, function, chapter one. Okay, now that you have the secondary structures, you're now gonna go to the next level, which is tertiary structure. Ah, ah. That's the whole protein going like this. I call that global folding, see? Secondary structure is local folding, folding in the neighborhood. Two kinds, here they are. But when the whole protein starts folding, that's global folding, that's tertiary structure. See, if I say tertiary structure, very few people will know what that is. But then now you know, oh, oh, that's the whole thing folding in on itself. And that will be tertiary structure. Watch this, watch. I have another illustration for you. Forgot to do this to my seven o'clock class. So here it is, watch, watch. Primary structure. Secondary structure is this, a folding here, folding here. Do you see that? Folding in the neighborhood. Look at tertiary structure. Watch, watch. That's tertiary, see? Now what do you have? Look, you have a three-dimensional shape. Now the protein has three dimensions. You have this. Now, a lot of proteins, that's what they do, and that's it, they go to work. Other proteins say, okay, that's one part of me. I need more, and that's called quaternary. When tertiary structures come together, when two or more tertiary structures come together, now you're at the fourth level of structuring, quaternary. Now listen, some students make a mistake with this one. They say, I need four, because they focus on the word quaternary meaning four. No, quaternary means the fourth level of structuring. That means I need two of these or more coming together. Eh, eh. Quaternary is the coming together. Did I say you need four? No, I said two or more. more. This is quaternary. If I had three, it would be quaternary. If I had four, it would be quaternary okay. too. 
So an example of one that has three is collagen. Look at it. It's like braided hair. You know, if you leave your hair out without braiding it, I can sneak up behind you with a pair of scissors and go like this, cut, 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 really easy. You're not gonna be happy with me. So you wanna avoid that. You need to do what? You braid your hair. Take your hair, you braid it. Now it becomes really tough to cut. Look at that, nature. One protein, easy to cut. You take three of them, braid them together, they become tough. Where would you find this? In areas where you need strength, like your knee, for example. You see? It's usually held, holding things together where you need strength, where you need support. So collagen is also in your tissues, in between your tissues and so forth. Hemoglobin has four of these. Hemoglobin has four of these. And this guy is designed to carry oxygen for you to your cells and pick up, pick up CO2. Real quick before you leave. We said the secondary structure of proteins are held by hydrogen bonds. What about the tertiary structure? Listen to it. Any bond is possible. It, any bond is possible. But which bond is actually holding your protein together depends on the sequence. Listen to me, please. It depends on the sequence. Listen to me. You got an R group that is negatively charged, an R group that is positively charged. When you have these two, then an ionic bond is possible. You have two R groups that are hydrophobic, then hydrophobic interactions are possible. You have two R groups that are polar, then hydrogen bond is possible. When you have two cysteines, the sulfohydro groups come together and form a covalent bond. You change the pH, it makes a covalent bond. Hang in there one more minute for me, please. Uh, yeah. All right? You change the pH, you make a covalent bond, disulfide bridge. If you change the pH back, what happens? It breaks. It breaks. You have to realize something. I said, any bond is possible, but what, what's happening depends on that. Yeah, I'll show you an example of that. If your protein does not have a negatively charged R group, is an ionic bond possible? No, no. no, it's not. If your protein only has one cysteine, is a disulfide bridge possible? No. The last thing I'll say for this is the quaternary structure. Any bond can hold the quaternary structure except for a covalent bond. Why? It's, about, it's what you're about to do right now. Look at that. You guys have four people at your late ta uh, table. You're not holding hands, I hope. So when I let you go, you're going home on your own. So right now you're interacting through hydrophobic interactions, hydrogen bonding, whatever, but you're not covalently bond. Why? Because when you're done, you're free to go. See that? You, that's what you're about to do. If you were holding hands with your lab partner, then everywhere you go, he or she is going. But that can't happen here. So in quaternary structure, to finish it off, any bond is possible except for the covalent bond. Sorry for keeping you a little later. I'll see you Monday. I am done with this for today.